Hello everyone and welcome to part two of our two-part Halloween special. I'm your host, Jason Ellis, joined by my co-host, Joe Quinn Matthews. And we are picking up right where we left off with part one. If you haven't checked out part one, I highly suggest you check that out first. We are in the middle of our Halloween movie bracket. And uh, the rest of this episode is really just going through that bracket and finding our champion. Joe, you got anything else? Uh, no, not really, other than the Peabody potato fact of the day. Potato blossoms used to be a big hit in royal fashion. Potatoes first became fashionable when Marie Antoinette paraded through French countryside wearing potato blossoms in her hair. Inspirational, Mrs. Peabody. Yes. How does she do it? How does she always she, she do it? She keeps getting better and better every single time. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm appalled. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's uh, get right back into it. Wake in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath and I get real high and I screw this up on my lungs. What's going on? And I say, hey. Uh, for round five, we have Casper versus Haunted Mansion, the, the two ghostly movies on this list. So with Casper, basically this like rich rich bitch uh, mm. inherits the, the estate from her dead father. That's all that he left her. And she thought, oh, this is all he left. It was a stupid property. Turns out though that in the, the will or whatever, there's a message saying that there's treasure in there. But the only problem is that the house is also haunted by Casper the Friendly Ghost and his three... They, I don't think they specifically say it in the movie, but technically... In oh, like uncles. Other, the, the uncles. The three uncles. Yeah. Uh, Stretch, Fatso, and Stinky. And so she tries to have a bunch of different people come in and uh, either get rid of the ghosts or excavate it and <laughs> find the treasure. But everybody's too scared to, to, to you know do the job. And then eventually Casper sees on TV an ad for a ghost therapist. Well, it's not really ads, like a news story. And in the news story, it also shows his daughter who Casper has a crush on. So he sh- basically subliminally shows, well, that's a woman, he puts a TV on in front of the lady and he shows her the ad. And so the rich lady calls up the ghost uh, therapist and gets him to come and live in the house. And uh, they have to try, well, really uh, the, the job of him is to get the ghosts to move on but you know mm-hmm. they don't really have a they don't really feel like they need to move on they're just they're just troublemakers he also uh, his wife is also dead and he's uh, he's on a hunt for his wife and so we go through you know the movie where he tries to you know work with the ghosts as well as the ghosts like kind of playing pranks on him and stuff and Casper having this like relationship with uh, the daughter while also the rich lady is trying to find the treasure it's a bunch of it's kind of a bunch of different things going on but it, it's done really well I feel like it's revealed that Casper's dad's an inventor who has a machine in the basement that can bring people back to life and there's only enough juice for one person. And so the, the rich lady finds out about this and she kills herself to get into the, or she doesn't kill herself, she wants to kill her assistant, but she ends up killing herself. So she can become a ghost and go into the vault that she can't get into uh, that was otherwise. The, that was the funniest thing. Oh my God. The Just funniest. the idea of that. The funniest thing is they had to animate jiggle physics for her ghost. Yes. <laughs> that too. Did anybody else like you noticed, noticed that, that right? Yeah. I, I noticed notice that, that instantly. Wow. It was super apparent. Um, also, another thing I'll say about this movie: Casper is f- fucking horny as oh. shit. He's a fuck boy in this movie. He That's is. My notes. He's a fuck boy. Can I keep you? I wrote Casper the horny ghost, the horniest ghost <laughs> you ever know. <laughs> Cause holy shit, dude. Yeah, his crush on uh, uh I think uh, oh, what's her name, Cat. Yeah, Cat, uh, yeah. His, crush, his crush on Cat is a bit creepy. He's also like, when he's a ghost, it's kind of, you kind of look past it a little bit where it's like he still seems very friendly and stuff. When he's, tur- spoiler alert, uh, he gets turned into a human for one night to have a dance. 30 minutes. The, 30 for, minutes. Yeah, for, for, to, have, to dance with, with Cat at the school, like Halloween dance is at, taking place at her house. And when he's turned to a, a human, he, he's very much a fuckboy as a human as well. Like he looks. Mm-hmm. Like a fuck boy, he kind of talks like a fuck boy, but uh, you know, I'll, he just wants to get his rocks off, and now I, yeah, I don't blame I, him. He doesn't have rocks. Uh, there's also kind of like an inconsistency because what what is Casper's unfinished business? Wouldn't you imagine he it's never to be able, like, never been able to like be with a girl? Mm. Wouldn't you say Casper's that. 
business Either that done. or because like he couldn't remember what had happened. Right. Well, it was originally to keep his dad company, but then obviously his dad moved on. So mm-hmm. I don't know what it was after that. Yeah. I feel like his business would be finished and therefore he would have to move on. Right. Yeah, that whole thing made really no sense if you think right. about it. Because like you could argue that her, like the, the businesswoman's uh, business wasn't done because she doesn't know what was inside the chest. True. Mm-hmm. The bu- the business wasn't to like just grab the chest. It was to like get the treasure. She doesn't have the treasure unless she like opens it up. Other than that, this movie's like r- <laughs> this movie's a classic. Oh yeah. Uh, th- this movie it is was, dumb, but it's a classic. It was honestly better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, me too. I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. Um, I really liked that they had Eric Idle in there. I wish he was in it a bit more, cause he was just wicked funny. Mm-hmm. There's that one stupid joke <laughs> where they have the Ghostbuster. Yeah. Come out. Yeah, Dan Aykroyd just, just like laugh. shows up. <laughs> there was a lot of like star-studded cameos, like Clint yeah. Eastwood yeah. was also in it. Mel Gibson was mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. And Ronnie Dangerfield. It was, yeah, it was, it was very surprising, all of the all of the, the cameos. But yeah, I had a really good... I also watched this uh, earlier today, and yeah, I, 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 I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I just had a good time with this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing I will say, there's like there's like five different plots going on. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's like the, the ghosts like trying to... Like, trying to like get the unfinished business with like the main characters, the main ghosts. Yep. And there's also like trying to get the treasure... Mm-hmm. Then it's like trying to get, like, communicate with his wife. Yeah. Then it's like the the, the, like the school dance. Yeah. And then at the end, they add like another plot where they're trying, like the the girl that like got laughed at at school, is Kinda like scary, buddy. Yeah. It's, yeah, there's a lot going on in the movie, but it's, at the same time, lot. it's very. It's not like. It's, it's kind digestible. Of short, it's kind of yeah, it's a digestible short movie as well. But there just happens to be a lot going on. But it's not like it's not muddy though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it made the movie feel quick because it, you were never like stuck in one. Yeah, you were plot. never bored with this movie. There was always something going on. It was very digest, di- digestible. Fuck. Yeah. Um, How, who was who was your guys' favorite uncle of the, of the three uh, the ghostly trio? I thought they were all annoying, honestly. My uh, favorite was Stinky. No, Stink. Mm, oh no. come on! Don't, don't do Stinky like that. <laughs> Fatso. Fatso is really probably my dude. favorite. Fat- I mean, they're, I think they're all good. I like all of them. I think Casper's <laughs> probably the, like the worst part of this uh, movie. I honestly agree. He's, I think he's uh, honestly, yeah, yeah he's just boring. I know they made the sequel, Casper meets Wendy. I think. Wait, there's a like, sequel. With Hilary Duff. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a sequel. I mean, it's based on a, on a book. Like Wendy's a character in like the comics as well. She's like a witch, like a, like a child witch. But yeah, mm-hmm. they made one with Hilary Duff's uh, plays Wendy. She's like a young Hilary hmm. Duff. I don't remember it a whole lot. I haven't watched it in forever. I think it has different voice actors, though. I don't think it's the same cast. Probably. I think it was, like, a much cheaper, like, kind of straight-to-home video type of thing that they did. The the CGI in this movie was kind of decent. Casper looked the best out of all, like, the, the ghosts. Right. Uh, but, uh, like, the, the human ghosts... Uh, uh, hang on, that's another that's thing. Why, yeah. why, don't the, why don't they look like Casper and, like, the uncles? Why do uh, they have, like, actual characteristics based on their, like... <laughs> I think they still uh, had somewhat of a consistency where like, they, they did make them a whole lot more cartoonier. It wasn't like they were just the same actors, just transparent or anything. Like they gave them like more cartoony features and stuff. They did, but at the same Slightly. time, like they, they had hair, they had clothes on, they, right. they had like this, like their body features. Why, why, like, I don't know. Why did they create, mo- I guess so you know that's who they are. Also, the way they presented like the rich woman, uh, like her her ghost is like this big demon, and the whole mm. like the whole scene turns red. But then you see her, and she's like the same size as all the other ghosts. <laughs> right. So, I do genuinely enjoy this movie, though. Yeah. Uh, for all like the criticism it has, it's a dumb movie, but it's like, it's it knows it's dumb. Right. Haunted Mansion. No, yeah. No, then yeah. we go to Haunted no. Mansion, and I don't. I didn't have many memories watching it as a kid. I used to be scared of the ride. The ride scared me as a kid when I went to Disney World when I was like five. Um, but I, I kind of had some memories, but not really very vague. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I watched Haunted Mansion again, <laughs> and uh, let's just say it's not very good. It, yeah. <laughs> it was never good. That's Basically, not... really quick story synopsis. This dude back in like I don't know how long ago, 
Uh, his wife kills herself, or it appears that she kills herself. So he dies, he kills himself too, but he becomes a ghost and he haunts the mansion that he owns. And then he sees an ad for this real estate agent and his wife, and the wife looks like his fiance. And so the butler, I think it's the butler that calls and they get the real estate agent and stuff to look at the house to really just like lure her to get them to remarry. And then, so they get trapped there and a bunch of just, uh, you know, hijinks, I guess, happen during it. And then the, he eventually, the, the ghost is gonna marry her. The, the ghost really, he's not really in the wrong. He doesn't really know what's going on. Really the evil person is the, the butler. He knows that, he, the butler actually also killed the original woman. I, so I, my first note that I have for the movie is an, a new title for it. And it's uh, Haunted Mansion, Eddie Murphy gets cucked by a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because that's, that's kind of what accurate. it is. Eddie Murphy just absolutely ruins any chance this movie had. The character is just like he's so unlikable. The dad, yeah, I don't know. he is. And at first, they like try to make him seem likable because yeah. like they he's like, I gotta go home, I gotta go home. Like, but they're like, no, stay, drink, sign. But once they like get the call about the mansion and then like on the drive to the mansion you're it, it goes downhill quick it's yeah. just like it's eddie murdy <laughs> eddie murdy eddie murphy's like <laughs> patented i'm gonna yell a lot comedy yell and talk fast comedy and it doesn't do this movie any favors because it's trying to be scary it's trying to be scary and it's trying to be a spectacle but all you have is eddie murphy screaming the whole time mm-hmm. and I, like they tried to i, I think they he tried to redeem his character, but it didn't really come off as anything. Um, no, it didn't. come off as believable. They tried yeah. to have like at the beginning they set up his son scared to kill spiders, and he ends up mm-hmm. touching a door for half a second with a spider <laughs> on it or a few spiders on it, and then yeah. everyone's like, "Yeah, I'm proud of you." But then he still acts like a, a dick kind of at the end. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't seem like he really has that much more of appreciation for his family. Yeah, I, I see. I don't know. If it was the dialogue was bad or the acting was bad in parts of it. I think, I think the, the acting wife is... was a bad actress. Yeah, I, th- I agree. I think the wife was the worst actor out of all of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess the kids were kind of bad kid actors, but, you know, they're, they're kid actors. What do you expect? Uh, I thought that the mansion, like the set, I thought it was stunning, like the, the set mm-hmm. of the movie. I thought that was like a thing that they really like hit hard was mm-hmm. just like the, the set was really cool. The jokes I thought were hit or miss. Some of them were just super corny and like just not delivered right. And like there were other ones that like kind of snuck in randomly that did make me laugh. It's just, uh, it's just like incidental dumb stuff. And, I, and I, the only thing that I like liked was when they were in the cemetery and like there was like the barbershop like quartet of like. Oh mm-hmm. no! Oh, I hated that oh, like so statues. much. I really enjoyed it. I, re- <laughs> I, I really was, wish there was I more. Was I, I wish we got so- more personalities from like the like the ghosts yeah i think that's what we were missing here there's more personality i should just like, i should preface this saying like i've never i i have been to disney world but i didn't go on the haunted mansion ride which is which this movie is based off of i, I i'm pretty sure those like talking heads are like something in the ride I i'm like so. i haven't been on I, in a while so. so i think that's why they were included but they were just so at, at so out of place it wasn't funny <laughs> yeah. it, it was drone it droned on and mm. And at the end of the movie, they like took them and they're on the back of the car, yeah. going down like the infinite random. bridge. There was also like one of my big things was like I felt like there were certain areas of the movie that were just underdeveloped. Like the ending I, is where like I kind of noticed it the most when like it was meant to be kind of like emotional and like when they were saying goodbye to the ghosts and stuff like like there was like a connection between them, but there wasn't any emotional connection between them and the and the the staff like. There was really minimal interaction between the two. They just kind of randomly yep. decided to help them. They didn't really like interact in any other way. And not, all of a sudden, like they're hugging and like on the verge of tears, mm-hmm. like saying goodbye to each other. I do think Wallace Shawn is the best part of this movie, though, because mm-hmm. he played like yeah. the ghost. I, one yeah, of the so, workers. He wasn't I'm the sorry. butler, but no, you can. You can he was just like a house person, like a yeah staff sure. member. Yeah, I, I said it before that this movie kind of reminds me of like Rocky Horror with the, just the plot. Of how they get to the mansion and stuff it's like right it's just like kind of incidental but the thing that rocky horror does is that it has a lot of character and a lot of personality and it can kind of skimp on the plot because of that if this movie did the same sort of thing it could have been way better so i guess we can vote 
I think it's kind of obvious what's going through, but uh, Joe, yeah. we'll start with you. What it, haunted Man- between no, Casper it's, it's, and Haunted Mansion, what's going through? It's Casper. It's Casper 100%. Yeah. Casper might be like a worse movie fundamentally, but it's just... I don't even think that. I don't know. I I think like when you look at both of them side by side, which one like is more of a movie, you would say Haunted Mansion, but which one like is like the better time to have, you would say Casper. Yeah, I agree. My votes for Casper as well. Well, actually, I was going to say that Talking Heads really pull the movie. Oh, no. So Haunted Mansion <laughs> is my vote. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, Casper moves on to round two. All right, we're coming out to the last three, three sets of, of movies around mm-hmm. round one. And this is one that I think, because you guys were saying that uh, you thought that Corpse Bride and Monster House was the closest one. So coming up next, we have The Addams Family versus Beetlejuice. I guess I'll just come up front and say that, and I, okay, actually, I want to I want to make sure we all watch the same one, correct? The '90s live action one, yeah, not the yeah, new animation it. one. We did mm-hmm. not. I, so I I originally thought that the first Adams Family like live action movie was Adams Family Values. I got the two of them mixed up. I had actually mm-hmm. never seen this Adams Family before, but I uh, had seen Family Values. Right. Yeah, Family, Family Values is really good too, but I, I Family is one of my favorite Halloween movies. Mm-hmm. I really, really enjoy it, and I, this was another, I, I had like four movies left that I had to watch, like in the past like 24 hours, so I, I kind of binged them like all the, this morning. And so I rewatched Adam's Family, and granted I really didn't have to, because I, I watch it like every year. And it's just like, well, okay, I guess we'll go over the plot really quick. So basically, it starts off where Uncle Fester has been gone for like 25 years, and there's like a, I think the guy's their accountant. Uh, yeah. Their, their accountant, the Adams family accountant, goes over to like the house to get like the the quarter like funds or whatever, uh, and he, you, you know, sees where like the vault to the Adams family is, uh, and he, so he goes back to his office and there's a lady there that he owes money to, or he's like a loan shark or something, uh, that he that he owes money to, and he doesn't have the money, and he realizes that the lady, like the old lady, has a son named. Uh, Oh, what's his name? Gordon, and he looks just like Uncle Fester, and so he's like, "They'll let's bring him in and pretend to be Fester. Uh, they'll believe it because he looks just like him, and then that way you can get access to the vault and get money." So Fester infiltrates, or Gordon infiltrates the 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 house. He is kind of reintroduced to everybody. It, it, it it's kind of I. I I'll say the spoiler now because it's, it's kind of, when you watch from the beginning, it's kind of obvious what's going to happen. Uh, turns out it actually is Fester, um, <laughs> and you, you kind of notice that, especially when like there's certain things that he just remembers. Uh, but anyways, so they they try to infiltrate. They they say that he was lost in the Bermuda Triangle, and that that she's like the his mother, quote unquote mother, plays a caretaker for him, and they they bring him to the Adams family house, and they have to get the treasure and try to steal it, and they fail. But with that out of the way, I think that this movie, it's just like unabashedly fun, this movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I just love how wacky, like the wacky, campy, over the top grimness uh, of the movie. Where like every single like moment that they can kind of chew in like a dark, grim joke, they do. And it's like very campy, it's very corny, but like they, they lean into it hard and they like own up to it. And I just think it's a great, fun time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's, it's like the opposite of um, Haunted Mansion was actually personality in all the characters. Yeah. And they all feel pretty distinct, too. I think that's an advantage of just the IP, I guess. I don't the, casting, has that. the casting for this movie was just 100% nailed. Yeah. It, it, mm-hmm. it, it's actually like, it's, not, it's crazy how like well these characters fit with like the original 30s or what i forgot what is it 30s for the original I think it's 60s. Adam family 60s okay all right oh, or maybe it is in 60s off. actually wait i don't i think it's 60s i could be wrong yeah 60s mm. all right well i i still think these characters like fit really yeah. really well these are like the adams for me same i i just i love i i, I get it is the first time i saw it but i love this movie I think I might like Family Values more, but I still, I love both of them. I love both of them. No, I agree. It's just like, <sighs> how can you hate on such characters? 
they're all really well developed. I mean, it's just one movie, yeah. but maybe it's because we all have an idea of what they're supposed to be like. Mm-hmm. But they all feel so distinct. Like Wednesday Adams, iconic role, right? It was played yeah. by the girl from Casper too. Oh, I I didn't even bring it up. I meant to say when we were talking about Casper, Christina Ritchie has mm-hmm. three roles in this in this bracket. Yeah, she has three <laughs> moves in this bracket. So that was that was the first of the Christina Ritchie. Tri- uh, what's, what's the triple third threat. one? Uh, it's season Sleepy Hollow. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that. But yeah, she's really good. She just like a, she's like a star child actress, I guess yeah. you could say. And yeah, I, like, even if it's not the most plot heavy movie it doesn't really have to be you just have mm. a fun time with the characters yeah like the, the they go full on with like the aesthetic mm-hmm. the the juxtaposition with like other stuff like the, the play i love the play scene mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like everything about this movie is just like it's just fun I, it's just it's just a good time it's kind of like casper where it's like it's just a really really good time granted i think this is a better movie than casper yeah like, definitely movie I, I I love it, and I that might be a, kind of like a spoiler for my votes probably gonna be, but but I, I'm a huge huge fan of Adam's Family. Now Adam's Family is going up against Beetlejuice. Do either one of you wanna wanna give a quick synopsis of what Beetlejuice is about? So it's like Alec Baldwin and who's the lady? Gina I'm Davis. Where her name? Oh, Gina, Gina Davis. Davis. I've, I've <laughs> face just blanked on me. So. I've done her shame, I guess. <laughs> they're a couple, and they're like, they get a house, I think, right? Yeah, they're like, well, they're living in like a big house that like yeah. is too big for them. Like, long story short, they end up dying, and Beetlejuice, like, they get kind of transported into the world of Beetlejuice, and right, I think Beetlejuice wants to to marry, right, Gina Davis. No, did is this one of the first movies that you watched? Yeah. Of, okay. Kind of drawing I, I watched the, I watched this one right before. So they so yeah, so they die. You're pretty on the mark for the most part. So they they die and then they're stuck in their house. Like they're stuck haunting their house mm. and they can't mm-hmm. leave and they leave they're in like this weird like desert. Uh, and they have no idea what's going on and they find a book where it's like a handbook for the the newly deceased. And so basically their house gets sold to like these people from New York. And they're not a big fan of these people. They they spend a lot of time working on this house, and the new people want to like modernize it and like change it up. And so they 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 need to s- scare them. They need to haunt them out of the house. But they're really terrible at it. And then long story short, uh, there's Beetlejuice, who's like this. He used to work for like I don't even know what the the is it a ministry? Not a ministry. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's some sort of organization the, yeah really and, and the office for like people like they're they're like uh advisors to the newly dead he used to work there but he got fired uh because he's i guess too over the top and basically he's like a freelancer <laughs> who like you can hire to scare people but it's very like not it's not advised that you do that and in order for you to uh kind of like free him i guess it's kind of like a genie or like in order for you to free him uh you have to do a certain thing for him you have to say his name three times in a row and then he's like free to like scare or whatever. Yeah. And I think if you say it three times again, he he's like gets sucked away or something. So they hire this guy, and he uh, scares him a bit t- too much. He like has like this giant snake or something. And eventually they they storm away and they try to scare again by themselves, but it's not not really working. And the new family there is like, oh yeah, this is this will be a great like amusement like attraction like uh, a haunted house and people can come and like get scared or whatever and like pay for it. Yeah. Um. And basically, Beetlejuice comes back, and yeah, so in order to for him to be completely free and no longer be part of, like, I, just, I don't know if it's like a curse or, or what, but in order for him to be completely free, he has to get married. And so he tries to get married to uh, the the family, like the family that moved in, their daughter, who is played by uh, Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and then eventually he gets stopped, and the two families end up living together in harmony. Which is not really explained why they're now cool with each other, <laughs> but they but they're cool with each other now. I'll be honest, Beetlejuice never really did it for me. I've, I've never really been a huge fan of Beetlejuice. It's it's like an okay movie for me, mm-hmm. but it's like I don't know. It never really did anything. It, it was, Alec Baldwin looks so like strange, young. It's so strange. It really is so weird. Young. I think I think the movie plays. It has a lot of the perks. I think of Adam's Family. It has the. Uh... 
Um, it doesn't have as much personality. Beetlejuice obviously does himself, mm -hmm. but the other characters are kind of a bit like like comparing to the Adams family. It's more lackluster. Right. It does have a lot of creative visuals though, mm -hmm. like when the, um, Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin get their faces like switched into monsters or whatever. There's a lot of stuff like that that I think is really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But I, what I wish. In order for me to like have this go over Adam's family, it would have had to have way more Beetlejuice. I think he's not in the movie that much. For, for him to be the title character, he's in it for like I think I looked it up. He's in it like 17 minutes. That was, that was one thing that I was kind of surprised we watching it was like a lot of it was just he wasn't really in that mm -hmm. much. He was just kind of there a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah that's my in. problem with it. I don't thoughts? really have a lot to say about this movie because this is. This was the first movie I watched for this list because you said like it would probably be hard to find. So mm, I was like, all right, right, let me get this over out of the way now. I wasn't really paying much attention to it. I, uh -huh. like, I, I know like the main plot. It was also the first time I saw it because I just really don't like Tim Burton. I think he does like good for Batman, but other than that, I don't think... I... I'll, should we just start voting now? Because I, I feel like <laughs> yeah, I've, sure. If there isn't much to say, yeah, we can just. I'm yeah. I'm very similar. Yeah, if you don't like right? if you don't, don't like don't. Tim Burton, you're not gonna like Beetlejuice. It's the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so a very I think Tim I think we could all, we already know. It's the unanimous Adam's family vote, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so Adam's family moves on. Now for round seven, we have another Tim Burton movie in Sleepy Hollow, mm -hmm. another Christina Ricci movie in Sleepy Hollow, versus Night of the Living Dead. Uh, Sleepy Hollow is a headless horse movie. There's a bunch of murders going on by the headless horseman. And so Ichabod Crane, who's like a, a forensics man, comes in to try to solve the murder. And uh, turns out that there's a bit more to the mystery than just uh, a, a headless horseman randomly killing people. Mm -hmm. We go through, it turns out there's a conspiracy with a will. The like step or not step, like the, the wife of the richest man in town slash stepmother to like his daughter who's played by Christina Ritchie is actually a witch uh, who uh, whose family was kicked off the land by that that same family like a while ago. And she's there to steal the will. And she has to kill a bunch of people that are in the way of her being in the will. And it's real that it's her and they have to stop her. Thoughts on Sleepy Hollow Joe Quinn? Because you are yeah, a Tim Burton fan. Joe Quinn. Yeah, I, I, the biggest problem I have with this movie is it it, it's a lot of a lot of like bad mystery I'm not 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 that I'm calling this movie bad because it's okay but a lot of like bad mystery horror movies will like they'll just it, it's making up its own rules and it's not giving us breadcrumbs to lead us along the way it that's what mm -hmm. the biggest problem I have with this movie is because it the so you thought it came out of nowhere I think it came out of nowhere I guess thinking back on it there might be like a couple of clues Mm -hmm. but I none that are really coming to mind for me and like I the most interesting part is like the like the gore of this movie I'd say is probably like the most interesting part yeah, of the I scenery agree. I was very which, surprised by that mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the the mystery of it I wasn't expecting it to be like a mystery film but I but when it, when it turned out that there was a mystery to it I was I was I really enjoyed it I really uh, liked have you guys seen the like Disney old sleepy hollow animated thing it's so like the that's Ichab what I... mr ichabod crane like mr toad yeah. or something i have not seen it but i know about it so at first i thought that sleepy hollow like the, the title sleepy hollow was a disney movie so like mm. when i was trying to find it i was very confused are you probably like, on disney plus looking for it i i was i was on google looking for it first gotcha because i like i just because Google will like usually tell you like where you can find a movie, mm -hmm. and there are still some Disney movies on Netflix that aren't on Disney. Right. So I figured it'd be a safer bet to see that, and I, f I, I, I figured this is what you meant by Sleepy Hollow, and I'm very happy that I got it right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a bunch of different Headless Horseman movies, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, going back to that, like, I always kind of thought that Disney one. Um, it was kind of lame. I mean, I haven't seen it since I was a kid, so maybe, maybe right. I could appreciate it more now. But I always thought it was kind of lame. But I was so I was pretty surprised with how much I liked this movie. They kind of actually poked fun at the Disney one at the beginning, um, where the headless horseman was. He's kind of like a myth at the beginning. Nobody knows right. if he's real or not. And some pranksters 
dress up as a headless horseman with a pumpkin mm. to scare Ichabod Crane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I kind of appreciate that. They made the real headless horseman actually a lot scarier. And he goes out with, like, he does a lot of killing that you see in the movies. So yeah. He feels like much more of a threat. Yeah. The, the cast goes crazy for this yes. in this movie. It's got, obviously, like I say, uh, Christine Ritchie's in it, but it's got Christopher Walken in it. It's got <laughs> Ian McDermott, the Emperor, is in it. Yep. Uh, it's got the the teacher from Ferris Bueller, or not teacher, the principal from Ferris Bueller is in it. Slash, I think he's also in uh, in uh, Beetlejuice. I think he plays the dad in Beetlejuice. But like mm-hmm. the cast, and obviously Johnny Depp, and the it, uncle from the Harry Potter movies too. Yeah, him too. Yeah, the the mean uncle's in it as well. I was like when they got went into the room with all the old people like for the first time, like the round table kinda. I was like, I was Dang, shocked. this thing goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's a shame. I wish Ian McDormand had more to do because he's so good and everything. Well, I've only seen the Star Wars movies for him. But yeah. like, he's like, he can go off. He's kind of yeah. just a reserved guy with three lines in this one. Another interesting fact about the movie is that it was produced by Francis Ford Coppola. He's yeah, the producer I on it, was, aka the director of The, the Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they, they really went all out with this movie. I, I was, again, I was kind of in a similar boat with you, Note, where I was surprised how much I liked it and how like kind of far they went with it. Yeah, I think out of the Tim Burton movies on this list, it feels visually it's like you, you can tell it's that it's got that saturated look with few colors, but it kind of goes all out, and it's not as um, it's not as crazy as Beetlejuice or Corpse Bride in terms of how surreal it is. Obviously, it's supernatural, but it feels a bit more grounded than that. Yeah. I think that helps it. I will say that I still think I, I think Corpse Bride is the better film. But, mm-hmm. like, the, the visuals in this film... Obviously, you know, you're comparing two different mediums, and this, so that's not really fair. Corpse Bride has, like, a little more leeway because it's, you know, it's stop-motion animation, and you can just do that with animation. But, like, the visuals in this movie did actually, like, kind of shock me because I do kind of like the more grounded Tim Burton approach because, mm-hmm. like I said before, I think Tim Burton does really good for Batman, which is a really grounded kind of visual style and I'm not, I, you don't really s- it's not that you see a lot of that in Sleepy Hollow but you can appreciate the scenery more I'll say than in something like Beetlejuice where it's just trying to be wacky and crazy uh, I, I do have one big plot hole with this movie mm. so obviously the stepmom uh, so she wants the will so she can get the money right? but then she fakes her own death in the in the movie so how is she going to claim the money <laughs> if she's, if if she's he, the people think, think that she's dead? That. Like, the will itself isn't, like, a fortune. You have to go to, like, a government official to receive the money right. with the will. Right. And she, and she faked her death. You're registered dead. Maybe she yeah. had a will where she, like, forwarded her stuff to a fake name. Perhaps. Yeah, could have gone to, like, another person. But, yeah, we're just making but, it up now. Wait, that wouldn't make sense either because the daughter was, like in line to receive everything from the father so like it wouldn't matter if because she was she trying to kill the daughter was they were the trying, to kill the, trying to kill but they were trying didn't they kill the father first wasn't the father dead so That's true. the everything would automatically go to the daughter but the mom's dead so well they have a they have a forged will though don't they do they i think i, I, think, I, think, I think they 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 swapped the wills like one of the people that died was the person that was like the notary or something on on the will and they had like a, a a different one they made. I, I could be wrong. I I, it was a couple weeks ago I when I watched it. I can't remember. I can't remember. I do remember like something getting sealed. Yeah, I, I can't remember that. I'm not, not, I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I like I do agree 100 percent with your plot hole. That makes absolutely no sense. Right. <laughs> Is this the first time you saw this movie, Jason? I think I remember seeing it a long time ago, but I really didn't have much memory of of it. Because like. I feel like that's something you would probably pick up on like a second viewing. No, that was like one of the first things I noticed like when it ended. I watched it I watched it with our, our friend Mia and I told her I was like, this doesn't, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense that ending. But overall I still had a really good time with it though. Right. I thought it was a fun mis- murder mystery, supernatural, you know, gory movie. Then we have Night of the Living Dead. Which like honestly, I'm kind of happy that there isn't much plot to it because it's just you yeah, go, go through it really quick. Mm-hmm. But it's basically the 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 dead have risen. Zo- there's zombies all of a sudden from oh wait actually I, I so there's uh 
there's a reason for it. it they, they, they arise from the grave because of radiate satellite radiation yeah. from a satellite that went to Venus. Uh, but so they're brought up from the dead and they're just attacking the, the, the world, I guess. And we're, we follow a group of characters that are stuck in a house and they have to get it all boarded up and they have to figure out how they're going to survive. They originally, they just want to camp out there to help arise. But then, like, there's on the news, they say, like, oh, come go to, like, a go safe to, like, house. Shelter. Yeah, so yeah. they have, and, like, the, the there's a car outside, but, like, there's zombies all around and stuff, and they need gas and whatnot. There's a lot of different things they got to do. But really, just a group of people stuck, bored up in a house, trying to fight off this horde of zombies, kind of, and, mm-hmm. and stay alive. And I think that kind of basically covers the whole story. Again, it's not necessarily plot driven, it's more so, like, right. yeah, it's a character. Yeah. I ha- I, the only thing I have in my notes for this movie is we should start a fire over there, because like even before <laughs> like the go- mm-hmm. even before the government told them like you need to burn the body, the 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 black guy because I I don't remember what his name is mm-hmm. I don't know what ben, anyway his I name think. is huh I think, I think it's ben. ben Ben okay so Ben just like keeps lighting fires yeah <laughs> and I wa- I watch this movie. This this is the kind of movie you have to watch with a friend. You cannot watch this movie by yourself. I watched alone. No, I I, 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 uh, I don't know because I had I had I had so much enjoyment watching this movie with a friend. Mm-hmm. We were just, just like the, just like the banter between you two talking about the it? banter between us and like I feel like without somebody to sit there with you, this movie is gonna get extremely boring. Because mm-hmm. a lot of it is, like you said, it they're just in the house and they're yelling at each right. other. There's not a lot of visuals of like the zombies themselves, which would be more interesting. But right. when I did research for this movie, you know, this movie movie only had a hundred thousand dollar budget. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. They're only stuck in like one location for the right. most part. For 1968, only a hundred thousand dollars. That's why it was on black and white in the, almost 1970s. I want, yeah, I wanted to ask you guys: Did you guys watch it in black and white or the colorized version? Uh, There's a colorized version. I watched the colorized version. Are you serious? I didn't, not, I didn't know oh, there was geez. a colorized version. I feel like the black and white is part of what makes the movie so good for me. Yeah, it probably does add to it. I, it, I didn't take away though. I, I still think it worked this, with color. I love how like the first zombie that's shown is that. It's like that guy in the cemetery, and they get like a close up of his mouth. They see like the inside of his mouth, but you can just tell that he's just a British dude because he has a bad like, <laughs> <laughs> like jawline or whatever. Like, his teeth are all fucked up. But yeah, I really liked how the movie just started like guns a blazing, like kind of opposite. Like it could have had a thing where ch- like that children of the corn kind of like faulted from, where it's kind of like kind of a long start, mm-hmm. uh, but it's just kind of boring. This like it. It starts off guns ablaze and balls to the wall, you know. Then you're then you get stuck in the house. Like they there's they don't really beat around the bush. Like first like f- 10 15 minutes zombie, and then they get right into it. I I I have written down and I don't know exactly what this, what this means, but I have written down loved all the punches. I just I was like <laughs> oh I think you must mean when Ben was fighting the husband at the yeah, end. Yeah, there was he fought the husband. I think also when he like hit. Like, I think he hit the girl too, didn't he? Slapped, he slapped, he slapped, he slapped, slapped, slapped the girl. They were just I, like, I, he just kept he kept saying like, you did. You, why don't you just calm down? You should just calm down. Just snap out of it. Calm down. It <laughs> and probably then, no, it probably was the ending part because it was one of my last notes on there. Was love mm-hmm. the punches. We, me, me and my friend just love the part where where the girl gets slapped and she says like only two things for the rest of the movie. Even then, they like that act. <sighs> Barbara, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Okay, Barbara only said like maybe ten lines in this movie, so we had a joke saying like she got paid for a line. <laughs> like <laughs> she was paid by the line. She wasn't paid for like any of the like the movement, which right. is why she was seen moving so much throughout the house. Uh, and then the okay. ending. Oh wait, wait, what were you gonna say? What were you gonna say? Uh, uh, you, keep you keep going. Okay, I was I was gonna mention the ending. Uh, how it was like really sudden, like the. Where like the, the the group of like uh, like sheriff and like the I guess like the militia of people they're mm-hmm. like scanning yeah. the it's area like... they kill all the zombies and they see Ben who's the last person alive in the house basically just walking around the house and you expect them oh he's saved and they see him moving and they're like oh he got another one and they just blow his head off I will freaking love that ending but I just thought it was funny how you know you get 
And you live through all of that just to get gadded out of nowhere. And I think it's, I, it, it's like a wicked ironic. The whole thing is ironic, right? Ben is the one who doesn't want to go into the basement. Yeah, he's yeah. the only one who survives because he's in the basement. Mm -hmm. So it, I feel like he's kind of getting his comeuppance by dying mm -hmm. in that end. Yeah. There. yeah. The zombies I, were also like really intelligent. Was this like the first zombie movie? This couldn't have been. This is like the god it, no, it's zombie like, movie. It's like the first modern zombie movie. Yeah. Okay. Because there are still like a couple of things that like you wouldn't see in like a, like a, a, a zombie movie nowadays. That... Yeah, like the radiation stuff. Right. I really love how re realistic the movie is. It makes it feel like you're a part of the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. By being trapped in the house. house yeah, no matter what they do, they can't get anything to work right. The mm -hmm. only information they get of the apocalypse is from the radio the and the radio. TV. I just, oh my god, I just love this movie. Another fun fact about, about the thing, the film, is like, it's wicked popular because at the beginning of the movie, somebody was supposed to put a copyright title card Oh. Like when when the title screen came up, they never did that. They just forgot. So this movie ended up being in the public domain. Really? Um, yeah. So it got a lot of airtime on television because they didn't have to pay. Wow. I don't know if it's no money or if it's All if it's of free or what. Yeah. Were there sequels? Like, yeah. Yes, there were. Dawn okay. of the Dead and Day of the Dead. They're the good ones. This they made like three more after those, mm -hmm. which are kind of crappy but i had such high hopes for this movie because i thought this was like one of the first sami movies but i ended up just kind of being disappointed because mm. there's not really like anything going on in this movie i don't know maybe you guys feel differently i feel like this movie is just kind of a waste of time and i get i guess it's interesting to have it like all set in the house but that's it's because they didn't have a budget. Part part of that might be true. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, well we'll start with start with you, Joaquin. Sleepy Hollow. Okay. I can't really say much because I don't. I, I think Sleepy Hollow is like a fine movie. I think Night of the Living Dead is just a bad movie, even for the time. I would say it's wow. bad. I, it might have had some promise. I I I don't know. It just didn't live up to the reputation that I mm -hmm. like heard it would live up to. Okay, that's fair. Noah. Yeah, but I gotta go with Night of the Living Dead. This is like one of my all-time favorite movies, to be honest. It's mm -hmm. like, I think in context of the the um, George Romero's trilogy of other zombie movies too, they have such distinct feelings for, they were all made in different decades. This was the 60s, John of the Dead in the 70s, Day of the Dead in the 80s. So like, it really gives sort of a, uh, it's a time capsule of each decade that they're in. I really enjoy the the slower i guess part of being stuck in the house it's mm. kind of similar to one of the other movies we have left in the last round it really feels like you're trapped in there with them this is a tough one for me because i i enjoy them both for different reasons if i have to choose one to move on which one did i have a better time with i think i'm going with and i'm sorry Noah. i think i'm going with sleepy hollow no, it's your opinion. It's fair. I really enjoyed Night of the Living Dead. I'm not on, I'm not, not necessarily on Joe Quinn's spectrum where he thought it was a bad movie, but I think out of the two, I was more pleasantly surprised with how much I enjoyed Sleepy Hollow than Night of the Living Dead, which might be honestly, I think, I think in terms of just general consensus, it might be an unpopular opinion, but I'm going. I think I gotta go with that. So yeah, Gavel, so Sleepy Hollow was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. Gavel has been drawn down. Decision is final. Going through to the second round mm -hmm. is Sleepy Hollow. But anyways, for the last round, this is kind of the more horror slasher-esque type of, type of movies. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Halloween, uh, one of the you know all-time classic you know serial killer kind of slasher flicks. And we have uh, one that wasn't originally on the list, but due to a technicality, of a movie not being available to watch. Uh, we had Noah select a movie to be added to the list, and Noah, you selected Cube. L let's actually, let's start with Cube, despite the fact that Halloween I, I said first. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you kind of explain it, Noah. Explain what, cu okay. what Cube is. So yeah, I was very surprised that this is a, a movie free on YouTube. It's like a, a full-length feature film. I think it was released in the 90s. 
So it just kind of worked out for us. It's very, um, it's like a mystery. You don't really know. You don't really find out in the end either. But there's a bunch of characters stuck in this huge cube. It's, a, it's like this cube is made of cells that are probably like 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet. And they're all interconnected by little doors you have to crawl through. So they got to try to find their way out of this huge maze, basically. And like when Night of the Living Dead, it's a lower budget movie. Uh, this was just made with one set too. They had the one cube room mm-hmm. and they just kind of reused it over and over again, changed the lights. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's super interesting. I, they do honest- it. It's really impressive. It doesn't it feel, it feels a lot bigger than it is. Mm-hmm. That's smart though. It's that's really smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like when I Living Dead, it's really set in one central location. Mainly a character study. I was expecting it to be kind of more like a saw. When I got when you mm-hmm. watch the trailer, it seems kind of like like saw where it's a bunch of like traps. I mean, yeah, that, that is the thing. Yeah, I, I was expecting it to be a lot more like that. But no, like you said, it was a bit more of like a character study. And while I enjoyed Night of the Living Dead, uh, I didn't necessarily enjoy this one. I think that the acting is like extremely over dramatic and and in some in some cases i think it's bad acting as well uh although i'll say this i'll say this it, it i think it all depends on what what expectations you're going into this movie with depends on yeah. how you're gonna enjoy it fair i think that if you're going in for like really deep fantastic storytelling perhaps you're you might be out of luck but i think if you're just kind of going in for like turn your brain off a little bit and just like watch a watch a movie i think it's okay i honestly kind of wish that though and this might kind of contradict what i just said but i kind of wish that there was there was more cube and less social commentary i felt like the social like commentary more was very forced stuff? yeah just more like yeah i could agree uh, with that like more like uh, i don't know just different like aspects of the cube and stuff being revealed like i there's like the, especially the part where like they first like all of them kind of get into that first big argument and they're talking about like whether they're all just part of a system or like there's like a you know big brother and stuff it, it all just felt very forced to me and also i the my other one big gripe it might even be bigger it might even be bigger than the, the forced social commentary they were carving into steel with a button <laughs> yeah the, uh, you know what i go- i the, the hard button. jason jason i googled that i googled that i i googled is there a metal uh, is there a metal softer than plastic than plastic because <laughs> <laughs> like that that stuck out to me too i was, well, i don't think there were <laughs> plastic buttons were they, they uh, had they, to they, there's no way <laughs> no they just put sharp metal buttons into their mouth to suck on <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I don't know. I don't know. It seemed like uh, round squares. But Still, that, I mean, yeah, those were those were my thoughts on the movie. It I is would... kind of a stupid movie. Yeah. Like even the so the whole premise is that one of the students is a I mean one of the characters is a math student, and they can yeah. sort of decipher which it's rooms safe. are safe to go into because it's like a prime number or whatever. Right. It, one of the caveats is that I think it's a square of a prime. It's technically yeah. Skill. It's like yeah. It's like the uh, what is it? There's a certain word for it that I can't think I, of. I th- yeah. I think it was a square of a prime. It was mm-hmm. unsafe. And for some reason, this math student couldn't do that. Yeah. Which, like, if you're just talking about math and, and you don't know what's going on, then you, maybe you think, oh, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it'd be hard. But you're just multiplying it, like, by itself, and there's not that many possibilities. She should have been able to do that if she's as good as the movie made her to be. Mm-hmm. Well, they kind of have to rely on... <laughs> a special needs person, a savant, <laughs> who they have to drag around through the the movie. I yeah. thought that I I don't know. I thought that was pretty clever. I will say. I think uh, it would be clever if sorry if like they set her up as not as a a math whiz the whole time. Uh, mm, I don't know. I feel like that was fine. I think what I would have liked to see more out of this movie because I think the the setup is like really interesting. I, li- I would like to see that might ruin a little bit of it but like why they're in the cube to begin with might mm, be interesting yeah, open ended uh, so they made I think two movies after this 
Oh, one dude, of them man. is like a f straight up follow up where they do the same sort of setup, and then the third one is like you're following security guards who like, have cameras inside the cube or something. Mm -hmm. I, I forget oh. the details, but I think the third movie answers some of that. Okay. I honestly, I'm like I, Jason. It sounds like you don't like this movie like at all. I was all. not a big fan of the movie. I, 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 I didn't have like a terrible time with it. I genuinely, I genuinely enjoyed this movie. This is probably like one of the movies I, like I, uh, f like was pretty focused on because I kind of wanted to see how it would go. I think the ending is kind of bad. I don't like that it's just like a white void. Uh, yeah. I also don't like how, like, they they like got rid of the black guy. I don't remember. I the only character's name I remember is Levin, which is the girl, the uh -huh. mathematician girl. I think more characters would have been interesting to like if they kept going to like different cubes right and like finding more characters along the way which i think would have made up for not having a reason why uh like they're here if they just mm -hmm. had more characters but that might be kind of hard to focus on uh sure. more deaths too because there's only only like two there's only two cube deaths one mm -hmm. of the like beginning before like the uh the title card and another from acid being poured in the eyes right yeah and that's uh, in the first like 30 minutes too right so oh, like the cube the cube isn't going. like really a threat i mean uh, uh, you know obviously it's a threat but like you don't it doesn't it feels like it could have been more threatening I, right I, yeah i agree i wish they uh, set up the cube more at the beginning mm -hmm. i do think this is like a i do think this is like a pretty good to decent movie though and i probably now that i know there are sequels i probably will watch those because mm. i'm i'm invested enough in the whole mm. cube setup to see yeah, where this you. goes i so. think there's just, like, a lot of like because you you just kind of brought up another thing that like really stuck out to me in terms of like the just like weird corniness the like over the top like i don't know like uh when when the guy's talking to to Ren, uh, and he's like, uh, what, you, what are you gonna, how do you know so much about this Ren's? And he's like, it's Ren, it's French Ren. And, and he goes, and he goes, wait, you're the Ren? Yeah. The yeah. Ren? <laughs> he broke out of every prison in the world. And I was like, how does, how would anybody know that? Uh, he does. He's, I mean, a, he's, he's a, a police cop. officer. He's a, he's a cop. But still, like, but yeah, you're uh, the, the fact Ren. he didn't recognize it at first is kind of silly. <laughs> And like other stuff, like with the mathematician girl, when like when she would figure out like new stuff, like it's so like stereotypical to have this line where she's like, "Oh my gosh, of course. why didn't I see it earlier?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that I kind of chalk that I I had a problem with that too. Like again with the whole um, oh, what what movie did I say? Uh, Sleepy Hollow. There was mm -hmm. it, it was making up its own rules as it goes along. And there wasn't like a breadcrumb trail to follow. Now, sure. I guess n now that you watch it, if, you know, if you bust out a calculator and like want to do the math <laughs> in your head, you I know, think it you gets can... numbers wrong too. It probably does. I'm pretty sure it does. But it, it's still a fun. It's it's a fun like sort of mystery to figure it's it out. It's a fun time. I'll say that. Uh, Halloween. I probably can. I probably can describe this well enough. So. Uh, you, you said you can, or you. I probably can. I probably oh, I can. Thought said, I thought you said I probably couldn't describe it well enough. I was like, oh, okay. uh, so, so there's this kid named Michael Myers who uh, dresses up in a uh, clown costume. And he goes up to his sister's room after like sneaking around the house. He goes up to his sister's room with a knife in his hand. And she's naked. He keeps like stabbing her and kills his own sister. Mm -hmm. uh, which puts him in a mental institution. Uh, one night... Uh, it's super rainy out the his psychiatrist it was 15 years later yeah 15 years later uh, his psychiatrist and a woman are driving to the mental institution to I don't know exactly what they were trying to do I think they're gonna the, pick him up it sounded like they were saying they were gonna pick him does, up does uh, it, it to me it, it seemed like they were trying to kill him so because that's him, the reason I think. Like, yeah the reason why they dude. were yeah, the reason why they were like going to the mental hospital was to like prevent him from going on trial and getting escaped. But oh. because it's raining and uh, like he and another inmate, I'm pretty sure, 
<laughs> inmate for a mental hospital. You know what I mean. Yeah. He and yeah, another I mean. patient uh, end up stealing the car, and um, I think did they it's just kill him. The oh, car. it was just him. Yeah, there was just yeah, one person. So. There was a bunch of inmates that got out during it. There's yeah, a bunch of inmates in the field, but no, it was just it was just him that got. Oh, out okay, the car. okay, all right. Uh, uh, he ends up escaping, going in um their car that they were driving to the hospital in, mm -hmm. um, after like scaring the woman. Uh, then he like stops off uh, on the side of the road and kills a trucker and steals his clothes. Then like then he goes to the town. I, which I Haddonfield, I think, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Haddonfield. Haddonfield. He goes to Haddonfield, and he goes to like the house his sister was killed at. Uh, while this is happening, there's also um, a character played by. She's a really famous actor. Yeah, I, I can't think the actress's name. Jamie Lee Curtis, but it's her yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, Jamie Lee character. character. Yeah, Lowry Jamie Lee Stroll. Curtis is a uh, babysitter, but she's go like in high school. Uh, school's about to come out. Uh, like go out for Halloween, yeah. For Halloween, uh, she's gonna babysit um, a little boy. That I skipped the part where like they uh, went to the they went to the the doorstep and like knocked on the door at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, so she dropped off the keys of the house, which lets uh, Mike Myers get in the house. I'm not too sure on that. I think he was already in it somehow. Uh, yeah, I think the POV shot was indicating he was in it. Okay. Uh, so that ends up happening. Uh, school's out. Uh, Lori's hanging out with her friends for a little bit, walking home from school, but she feels like she's being followed. Uh, she is being followed by Mike Myers. None of her friends believe her that like someone's watching her. Lori ends up babysitting. Um, is it Lori the main character? Yeah, Lori's like, the main yeah. character. Uh, then like her friend is also babysitting. So like they they split off there. Mike Myers. It, it it's like it's around nighttime now. Mike Myers keeps going house to house and like scoping out to like see opportunities. Uh, and at one point, Lori's friend, who is babysitting a girl, uh, has to now babysit that girl because Lori's leaving. So no, it's the other way around. Other way, uh, yeah, she, brings, she, brings girl, she brings the girl over to Lori because she has to go pick up her friend Paul. Yeah, her boyfriend. Yeah, uh, but she ends up when Lori's friend tries to leave. Uh, Mike Myers is already waiting in the car, uh, mm -hmm. and slightly uh, does some like kinky choking, which apparently <laughs> kills her. Yes. Uh, so yeah. she's out of the picture. Uh, then two of uh, two Her of their friends, friends uh, like go to the house that uh, Lori's friend was just about to leave to pick up her boyfriend, but come mm -hmm. back to. But they don't notice that she's dead. Right. So they're like, oh, free house to ourselves. And like they, they have they have sex. And after <laughs> after they're done having sex, uh, Mike Myers kills the boyfriend when he goes downstairs <laughs> to try to give him some something to eat. Mm -hmm. And stabs him with his anti-gravity knife. Which I, he, just went, him. he just went straight through him. That's where right. it's on the wall. Mm -hmm. But also like he... There's no way a knife would hold up a body like that, too, you know? So yeah, without, like, at steel. least tearing it open, shit. yeah. Right. Uh, then he, like, uh, wears, like, a robe over his, his head. Mike Myers wears a robe over his head to kill the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I love that scene. Yeah, it was pretty good. But it, it was just kind of horny. John Carpenter, he, that was the yeah, director. Yeah, horny right? bastard, John. <laughs> yeah, he just wanted to show titties everywhere. After that, Lori is like babysitting the kids, but Mike Myers is coming for them now. He ends up getting in the house and like chasing after Lori. Uh, there's like a huge fight between Lori and Mike Myers. Uh, Lori like stabs him, but that's not enough. And then like s pokes him in the eye with a cane. Not a cane, uh, a hanger. A hanger. Yeah. That's yeah. also not enough. Then, like, the doctor comes to the house because, like, uh, the doctor, like, knew where he was going to go to the old house. And he brought, like, the sheriff of the town, who is also Lori's friend's father. Uh, I, I feel like I'm just entirely over explaining, but it's okay. at the at the end, the doctor, the doctor shoots Mike Myers and he ends up falling out of a window and landing uh, but the body disappears when they mm -hmm. go to check after it, and that's how the movie ends. So Mike yes. Myers is still alive to set up for 15 sequels. Yes, 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 yes. 
I, I noticed it a bit more when rewatching it this time. I think what makes the movie so effective at being scary is the fact that like it's technically it's like it's plausible in a sense where like yeah. Lori just happened to by chance at least in the first movie I think it's eventually revealed that she's like actually related to Mike later on in other movies yeah, but at least for the first stupid. at least for the first movie she simply by chance happened to walk by the Myers house and drop off the keys and that's how he kind of like honed on to her like she was kind of the first person that like he saw and so then he that's why she like began to hunt her and like the f- the fact that like you could just be in the wrong place at the wrong time and then get hunted down by somebody for whatever reason because they're mm-hmm. a sick person and so yeah it, it, the movie where it's like eventually it does kind of come a bit like uh supernatural ish where like she keeps killing him but he keeps like coming back that was what i i kept screaming at my tv i was like laura you dumb bitch like she, she would like would stab him and throw the knife away. I'm like, no, stab him more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she does it like three times. Where like she stabs him, throws the knife away, and he gets back up. Stabs mm-hmm. him, throws the knife away, he gets back up. Uh, but at least beforehand, before he like you see like how like unnaturally strong he is, and like how like, he keeps he like he just won't die. Before that, it's very much just like a he's just a psychopath killer, and he this could literally happen to to anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, yeah, they, they, oh wait, what were you going to say, Noah? Oh, you keep going. I was going to say, however, that is not, I think, the scariest part of the movie. I think the scariest part comes with, okay, so I don't know what the, the friend's name is. I know one of the friends is Lindsay. She's the one that gets strangled by the, the phone cord. Like, she's the one that had sex with her boyfriend. Yeah. I forget what the name of the other friend is. But basically, she she originally plans to leave to, to pick up her boyfriend, Paul, who snuck out. And they were, you know... I've, most likely going to do it but they were talking on the phone and when they were talking on the phone they were saying stuff like again john carpenter being a horny bastard they were saying stuff like uh talking about how he wants to see her naked or whatever and she's like well how about this time we actually do something so that's insinuating that they haven't done it yet and what i'm saying the greatest yeah. f- fear in this movie <laughs> oh no is dying a virgin oh no <laughs> and that i, I don't care it's on the internet that hits hard that, hit, that, that, that hits home. <laughs> and I think that's far scarier than, you know, Mike Myers just being a, a killer. Well, that is sort of a trope of a lot of slasher movies is, like, the virgins are supposed to be the ones who live. And, um, like, people who are more promiscuous are the ones that are supposed to die. Mm-hmm. And I think it was just, like, the fact that she wanted to was enough to <laughs> seal her fate. While Lori <laughs> was kind of the good girl who cared about school. See, at Incredible first, thing, but... at, at first, I thought Mike Myers was targeting people that were like really trying to have sex, or like kind of not skanky is like the wrong word for it because it's not a very nice thing to say. But that's that because I was very confused about like his whole motivation. But mm-hmm. I guess it's just I'm deranged. At least in the first yeah. movie, you said it might be it might be different, like in the sequels. But yeah. I, I'm I did not like this movie. Really? really i don't i don't like this movie i don't think it i don't think it was scary i don't think i don't even think it like set a foundation for future scary movies i don't understand why this is such a beloved classic wow wow i think it, it's good at really building tension yeah but if you're not into slow stuff like that it's so slow it's oh. it's painfully slow for me oh, i have, I have, I have like, a note like, though what was that well i was gonna say because one of the the kind of like memes about mike myers that he always walks everywhere like he's he's like hella slow but he always seems to catch up with people Mm -hmm. but i noticed when watching the first one again mike kind of be moving he kind of be moving in this one like he speed (laughs) walks a couple times in this one (laughs) he's not like the uh, later on in the the sequels joke when they do make him literally just walk super slow no and like he like somehow like magically like off camera catches up to people i will never ever watch a halloween sequel no jason have you seen the newest one yeah we went to the seat in theaters together oh i I couldn't remember if that was before you left or not honestly i I think i think that might be my favorite of the series maybe it's just because i've only seen it like once or twice Mm -hmm. but it, taking the rest of the movies out of context, just having the first one and the most recent one, Laurie Strode is just great. I freaking love her character. 
in that movie. She's just a psycho grandma, Joe Quinn, who's trying to protect her family. She lives, she knows um, Michael Myers is still alive. Mm-hmm, so she kind of just makes a, like a fortress out of her house. A bunch of guns and traps and stuff in case he ever breaks out. Oh my god, so it like gets super, like, I, I don't know what the word for it, but it's like, it's like like one of a Fast and Furious kind of movie. It's like for eh. just for dudes. No, no, it's it's kind of taken. It's not like a bunch of explosions or anything. I mean, by the climax, it's, it's like, obviously it's has like a lot of action and stuff. Mm. But it's more a reversal of the roles. Yeah, like where she's, she's the predator now. and he's the prey. Which well, he's oh, still hun- he's can... he's hunting her as well, but she's hunting yeah. her at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's I think by that the end be... though, he's more scared of her. That could be kind of interesting. I think it's a fun movie, and if you're gonna watch any of them, I'd say watch that sequel. Okay. I forget. Does does that sequel take away number two, or is two still yes. canon with that sequel? Two. It's only the first one that's canon. It's only the first one that's canon with that sequel. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm like ninety percent sure. Yeah, the, there's a bunch of different timelines. In one timeline, it turns out that Laurie is the sister of Michael Myers, which is just stupid. Oh it makes no sense. <laughs> Uh, I'm curious if I think we, I think we, I brought it up with you Noah when we watched it together like live like me you and me have kind of made note of it but I'm curious if Joe Quinn uh, if like the line caught him off with uh, there's a sus line about Lindsay from Bob who is uh, who's oh not Lin- Lindsay isn't one of the friends Lindsay's one of Lindsay's the little girl I think I might have said that's one of the friends earlier but Lindsay's the little Lindsay's the little girl that's getting babysat okay and so there's the the, the couple that show up that like you know do it uh they're they're also very horny and they're in the front seat and they're talking about taking each other's clothes off and one of, and the bob who's the boyfriend makes a line where he's like then we'll take Lindsay's clothes off yes i i, I recognize that oh. when i was watching it this time i was like what's wrong with you dude you know i okay so you know i the know joke? the i know the line that you're talking about but it, i didn't connect two and two together yeah at first I, just... I first i thought that was another friend but then he goes in and it's like oh Lindsay must be like <laughs> Like the little kid must be already even better, or whatever he said. They, they made it clear that Lindsay yeah. is the, the little girl. Oh no! Oh, it's yeah, hell watching sus. this time, I was so weird. Oh my this god! This movie's about to get a charge. <laughs> Cuties one it's, or Cuties yeah. zero. It's and it's just like <laughs> a really cool. weird like line that just is thrown in for like for no reason. John Carpenter, you sick bastard. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we've talked about both of them. It's time for our our votes. I know I'm gonna be. The I'll only go with one Joker here. first. Cube. Cube I'm gonna is go, so much better. I'm gonna go with Halloween. I I, th- I think I think those are the two obvious. I think Noah's gonna be the tiebreaker because I was kind of clear that I didn't like Cube, but I like Halloween. And Joker didn't like Halloween, but he likes Cube. So Noah, who likes both of them, will be the tiebreaker mm-hmm. here. I like what both of the movies set up, but mm-hmm. I think they're both good starting points. I think the Halloween franchise in general isn't the greatest slasher movie franchise and I, I think cube's kind of disappointing too in its own ways but if you want to watch a joke when i think they're still worth the watch uh but yeah my folks got to go with halloween i really Crazy. love just the amount of the build-up and the suspense uh it doesn't have super exciting gory kills compared to like friday the 13th later on and stuff like that but if you take it in context of how it was sort of the first as like the prototype of slashers I think it's really, I think it's a really good movie. Cube, I think is really good too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it holds up as well on second, third watching, but I think the idea itself is still fun. Okay, well there we have it. Halloween gone through, it is finalized, and we now are finally through the first round. <laughs> Imagine if you did this with thirty-two movies. That's yeah, you're yeah, insane. Movie That's why I, I, I think I said we should do eight movies, and yeah, you're like, nah, eight. sixteen. Cause I don't know, eight's like really cutting it short. You gotta really. I feel like I feel out. like we should have done eight and then randomized the bracket instead of like trying to pick similar kind of movies. True. That's probably what I would have done, but yeah, I understand like the I understand like why you did sixteen. I didn't. I honestly didn't expect it to, to take this line to get through, and I'm not gonna lie. I knew just describing <laughs> the movies was just gonna take forever. Well, who knows? Maybe I'll cut that, that the describing them out, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Let's see if, it's, if it still fits with the describing them. Okay. Luckily, though, we are moving on to round two. And in round two, we don't really have to describe the moves because we just described them. We can still talk Yay. about them. Yeah. So, round <laughs> one, or I guess 
bracket. I don't even know. How, I don't know how to describe it. Round one of round two. First matchup of round two. Set. It would be set. First set of round two. We have The Bride of Frankenstein versus Silence of the Lambs. This movie get. I'm sorry, but Bride of Frankenstein gets absolutely slaughtered by Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. It's not even a competition. Like, yeah. You can appreciate what Bride of Frankenstein did for the medium, but that's that's all you can kind of do in a matchup like this yeah it, it's kind of it's it is very much hindered by just the fact that like it's bright frank signs like a just like it's like a sign of the times type of thing you know it's mm-hmm. it was made in the 30s it shows it was made in the 30s and it's also up against signs of the lands which is just why they considered a phenomenal movie right yeah I, si- silence of the lambs i i do think absolutely beats bright frankenstein but I, w- I I do highly suggest people watch, and if if you have if you want to get Peacock for free and check it out, I think it's probably the better of the of the original Universal monster movies. I think it was I think it's a it's a fun time to watch. Mm-hmm. But yes, Silence of the Lambs, hundred percent is my vote to go through. Gavel down, right? Fred Frankenstein eliminated. Silence of the Lambs goes on to round three. Mm-hmm. Okay, set two of round two. We have Monster House versus Halloween Town. These titles are really fitting. Like, um, Monster House would mm-hmm. be inside Halloween Town. Mm-hmm. Very true, very true. Two very... They're different. I mean, they're both kids' movies, but, like, Halloween Town is very much a kids' kids' movie. Yeah. Well, Monster House does have the, that more adult humor. I, I'm going with Monster House between Halloween Town and Monster House. I think Monster House it was just mm-hmm. all around a bit better. I think it has better, like comedy in it uh i think just uh story wise it's a bit more solid yeah so I'm, I'm, going I, with ha- I'm going with monster house on this one yeah i i pretty much agree with everything you just said there there's not much more to be said other than like i guess for me i appreciate animation more than live action mm-hmm. even though i do think some of the things they did with ha- halloween town were interesting on a uh like a disney channel movie budget i i I, I think Monster House, it's not better by much, but I, I still think it's better. Yeah, I think Monster House has b- both the like production and the charm, so I think it, it wins out here. Yeah, I think Halloween Town's more so just the charm. Yeah, not less so about, about the production. production. <laughs> yeah, well, Mon- yeah, I, I agree with that. Now, next up, we have Casper versus Adam's Family, and I was considering before like starting... Uh, can swapping stuff around and having Casper versus the Adams Family round one because I do think there's similarities between them where it's like an old house uh, with tr- treasure in it that people have to kind of infiltrate. I think you definitely made the better choice in uh, uh, splitting them up. Be, in, in split, in, yeah, because yeah, then we would have had so Beetlejuice versus Haunted Mansion. Yeah, I feel like Casper and Haunted Mansion would like be a a better tie-in with yeah and adam's family and beetlejuice both have like that wacky zany factor which is what like they go for right so i feel like the the way you did it was smart uh but (laughs) i'm casper gets i'm so sorry casper i still think you're a fun time but you cannot compare to adam's family (laughs) you just can't yeah i agree like i kind of can't kind of give my spoiler ish you know thing earlier where i adam's family is one of my favorite halloween movies because there's certain movies that like like halloween town even though it's already eliminated but as, just as an example it's a movie that like i can watch every couple of years every every few years i can rewatch it and like it i oh like i forgot stuff about it and i can you know enjoy it again but i, I don't think i would enjoy it as much if i watched halloween town yearly adam's right. family i watch every year and it's still just as good the next year as it was before Mm-hmm. I, and I can't really say whether Casper would do that or not because I haven't really watched Casper year to year. I don't really own it on like DVD or anything, and it's not really on any streaming services. But I think yeah, what, I'm what going with brings, that. Yeah, I think what brings people to the Adams Family like over and over again is that you're connected to the characters. Yeah. Where Casper, like Casper, <laughs> is the title character. He's like the worst part about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so and some of the characters are good, but like I like Christina Ritchie in in uh casper i think she's honestly probably the best part of both movies uh, i mean maybe not in adam's family all the way because there's like so many different characters in adam's family no i still i think fester is the best character in that's adam's fair. family 
and I think here. for Casper, I think I think the the brother, the the uncles are the best. Mm -hmm. Which I know Noah, you heavily disagree with, but I just think they're annoying. Like some of their stuff was funny. I liked Eric Idle in the movie the best. But but yeah, I, I they're the, when we described both of them, we both were both of them. We were like they're both fun movies. But Adam's mm -hmm. Family is just way more fun to watch. Again, like, there's more like character to it. Mm -hmm. you, you keep wanting to come back. And also the, the sequel is... I know we're not basing it on the sequel, but the sequel is just as good. It's... it's, it's really, I don't know if, you ha if you've seen the sequel, no, but Adam's Family Values. I think yeah, so. It's, it's really good, too. I think it's... Again, I said it before. I think it's better. Uh, but yeah, they're, bo they're both really good. And yeah, Adam's Family all the way. So now we have, I think this one will be interesting because I'm kind of torn on these two. I know Jokin definitely isn't torn on them, and I don't know how Noah is, but we have Sleepy Hollow versus Halloween. So Jokin, you can say yours. I think we kind of know what you're going to pick because you kind of said you didn't like Halloween. Yeah, it's Sleepy Hollow. It's just, again, with Halloween, I just don't like anything that it did there's nothing i feel like there are like no redeeming factors in halloween to me mm -hmm. so sleepy hollow gets my vote noah how about you go you go jason and i want to think about what i'm gonna say hmm see i'm kind of in the same i'm in the same boat as you where i'm kind of like <laughs> i kind of need some time because the, the, there's they're both very different i think mm -hmm. i really enjoy the feel like the aesthetic of Sleepy Hollow more than I like Halloween. Like, I, that, that was one of the things I mentioned with, to Mia when we were watching it together was, I was like, I really like the feel of this movie. Like, I just, it, it just feels very Halloween-y, like just zany, dark. If you want to get into a Halloween, or, or if I want to get into a Halloween mood, I think this is a great movie to do that. Where Halloween, it's like, it's, it's very good. But it doesn't have that same feeling, I guess, to it. It's, it's just kind of like a more just realistic grim. I think that's something that the newest sequel did better was kind of make it feel more like Halloween. Right. This movie was supposed to take place in, I think, Illinois. But it, it was shot in, like, California. So there's no autumn colors or anything, even though it's Halloween yeah. time. So I think that's kind of a detriment to it. But I don't know. Like, I can't say... Sleepy Hollow makes me feel Halloween specifically. It kind of feels cold, like winter to me. That's fair as well. Like that's, I think Tim Burton uh, aesthetics in general do that to me. Obviously, right. it's very Halloween centric, but it's just so desaturated and cold and mm -hmm. devoid of life. Like I think Halloween's obviously the more iconic movie out of the two. Yeah, and it's done more for history too. It's done. But that's yeah, not it's, what we're it's saying. Super, it's super iconic. It's but it's, it's at the same time it's a really good movie. Like I really enjoy it, despite Joaquin, you know, not liking it. What can I say? Yeah, and again, there's no, there's no issue with that. But I didn't think this one would be that hard because it's such a weird mishmash. But yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to go for Sleepy Hollow. Just by like a weird, like, like, I'm, like a hair, but like a really weird misshapen hair. Like an ingrown, <laughs> by an ingrown hair. Ew. I'm going with Sleepy okay. Hollow. Because <laughs> right, like it's such, a, it's because so, it's like comparing apples and oranges. I think, Halloween. I think so, Halloween's a tighter film overall. Like we, it, the problem with having like a mystery, mm -hmm. um, like you guys were talking about some like plot holes and stuff. That is true. Yeah, and like, Sleepy Hollow does have a big plot holes. Right? I think like the, the cast in Sleepy Hollow is better because there's like big time character actors that we've all seen before. Right. It kind of makes me want to see more of them. Like Christopher Walken barely in the movie. Mm -hmm. The Emperor. All he does is he just goes. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like they played their roles well, but there's a lot of potential. Well, Laurie Strode, I think, is excellent. So I think it's very close too. But I'll go with Halloween so it gets a vote. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'm going with Sleepy Hollow just, just barely, just barely, just because I think it's also part of it was like how how caught off I was at how much I enjoyed it. I wasn't me too, expecting. Me too. I was really expecting this to kind of be like. I included it because I thought the Headless Horseman was kind of an iconic figure in Halloween, like, kind of culture, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to include something with the Headless Horseman. And, but I was kind of expecting, like, oh, it's kind of a throwaway. But it really caught me off guard with how much I enjoyed it. So, yeah. So that's the end 
of round two. And I think, is this technically the semifinals now? Or is this the, the this quarter? quarter? Quarter finals, okay. So now we have, wait, no. It, no, no, you're right. You're this right, is the semifinals. Right. This is the semi. This is the semifinals we already did we the, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have Silence of the Lambs versus Monster House. Again, <laughs> very, like, opposite ends of the spectrum. Well, I think it would have been weird if it was Signs of the Lambs versus Halloween Town. But, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but so we have Signs of the Lambs versus Monster House. Again, two very opposite ends of the spectrum in mm -hmm. terms of genre, like, like who their audience is, I feel like. I mean, obviously, there's obviously some crossover, but, like, who it was marketed towards. And it's right. just so... One's very much leans into like being a Halloween movie, while one is just kind of like scary. One of them is a kids movie, and the other one is Silence of the Lambs. I said that wrong. I said that completely wrong. <laughs> Fuck. Did I'm you? tired. Yeah, no. I was gonna say. I was gonna say one of them's a kids movie, and one of them's Monster, Monster House. House. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so for this. Here's my problem. Silence of the Lambs is not a movie I'm gonna, like, go back and watch, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like it. a one-time kind of deal because of how disturbing it is, and uh -huh. I don't know if I want to, like, subject myself to that. Right. So if if we're purely, like, basing this on, like... It's based on how what you want to base it on, you know? Right. If we're basing... If I'm basing this on, like, what movie I'm going to go back and watch, mm -hmm. I think Monster House has my vote. Because that's kind of, like, what I've been basing everything off of. Right. What can I sit through again? Because gotcha. I don't like scary movies. And I understand... Uh, Halloween kind of movies. I don't like them because I don't care for Halloween. Mm -hmm. But I think Monster House is just, like, a genuinely fun time. And I know you guys. I know you guys are probably thinking I'm crazy, and you're just gonna go say Silence of the Lambs right I don't know. after I'm, I'm done. I'm very torn, honestly. Really? I honestly am very torn on because again, are, it's like apples and oranges with this. How do you? It is. How do you like differentiate the two? At least, at least for or me, I'm, the two. I'm going for Monster House. So, and I kind of want to hear what Noah has to say first because yeah. I feel like. I feel like you're gonna be the deciding vote here, Jason. Well, I I don't know. I'm still kind of digesting Silence of the Lambs because I only watched it for the first time yesterday. That's well, true. Well, Monster House I've seen a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about a Halloween movie, Silence of the Lambs really isn't a Halloween movie. It's just like that's a, also true. A horror. Well, it's character study sorta of, with a, deep characters and stuff. Right. I don't know if I'd watch. I mean, I think I'd watch this again. I definitely want to see the sequels. Yeah, I would probably watch the, like the prequel and sequel to mm -hmm. Silence of the Lambs before I watch Monster House or Silence of the Lambs again. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, it hooks you in. But the thing about Silence of the Lambs is that I feel like there's other stuff like it, right? Pulp Fiction sort of got the same weird story. I mean, obviously it's not a sim very similar movies, but you got you get some of the. Um, like trap stuff with Bruce Willis mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You get some like of the creepy stuff with X Files and Law and Order, like with the mystery. Well, Monster House is, I feel like it's a really unique movie. I can't think of anything like it visually yeah. or because of the mocaps or with the story. Yeah, conceptually. Yeah. Obviously, are we gonna, are we are we about to unanimously vote Monster House over Signs of the Lambs? Because I'm honestly think, about to. <laughs> I'm gonna vote Signs of the Lambs just because of the quality of the movie. Okay. Oh, um, boo. <laughs> but I also, well, I see where it's going to. I don't want to give it zero three. Fair. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm gonna go with Monster House. I, and again, I, I was torn, but hearing you kind of work through it, no, I think, I think that's what made me go with Monster House is the mix of, you know, the rewatchability of it, the the fact that Sons of the Lambs, while it's a scary movie. It isn't necessarily a Halloween movie, and this is technically like labeled as a Halloween movie bracket. And again, like, like what you said, it's very unique in concept and like visual. Uh, yeah, I, I think yeah, Southland is the I'm better going, movie, but like, Monster I, House yes. fills a void. 
Uh, yeah, I, I agree, but I'm gonna, I'll go with Monster House as well. Which is, it's, it's very, very surprising. <laughs> but I'm, yes, I'm, uh, Monster House is going through to the finals. Woo! Yeah, I think that makes the finals more interesting too. Mm -hmm. And now we have, and I think this one is a bit more obvious, but we have Adam's Family versus Sleepy Hollow. And I don't think it, there's a question, really. Right. It's yeah, Adam's Sleepy Hollow. Oh, right, yeah. What? The, the, the stepmom. It, but, but in all seriousness, Adam's family, I think, is like, I don't think Sleepy Hollow holds a candle to Adam's family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Adam's family just wins this. Which, again, I I was super surprised by I how know. much I really enjoyed Sleepy Hollow. But I yeah. really, really love Adam's family, like a lot. It depends you, on you, said, what... you said you don't know, no. what's mm -hmm. your... Because it depends on what type of Halloween mood we're talking about. Because if we're talking about having a fun, whimsical sort of time, then yeah, Sleepy Hollow, family, right? But Sleepy Hollow definitely goes with the more grim. It really brings out a dead, <laughs> kind of drab feeling mm. of Halloween. It brings the two different sides of the spectrum, right? Right. And I think no, Sleepy Hollow really does that well. More. I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily Halloween, like I said before, that it evokes. But it does a good job of um, of making you feel kind of dread. The freaking killer's a menace in this movie, really. Plenty of gore, too. So are you going with Sleepy Hollow, Noah? I don't know. That's why, that's why I'm torn, because I'm not sure what type of Halloween right. mood I want to get in, right? I think it would, I might have to abstain. If you're going to a vote, it doesn't <laughs> well, matter. So. Yes, well, yeah, that is true. Mine, mine is for Adam's family, I imagine. Joe Quinn. Adam's family. Yeah. Oh, I said it. I said it. Oh, family. you did? Okay, you cut out for me. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I, I said I just me. I said Adam's family. <laughs> okay. As much as Sleepy Hollow like surprised me with like its like quality, uh, it's not a competition. At least for me, it's not because I I like the more fun nonsense kind of stuff than right. super serious. And so, did you say you were you were abstaining from a vote? No. Yeah, I'll for abstain. This one? There is some nonsense. Well, Christopher Walken in this movie is nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest part of the movie. He's like, oh, <laughs> look at my teeth. Yeah, why does his teeth look like that? I don't know, man. Oh, uh, quick he's tidbit a... uh, about like about Christopher Walken. Every time I hear Christopher Walken, instead of thinking of Christopher Walken. The first thing that comes to my mind is Steve Buscemi. <laughs> mm. Interesting. Yeah, the, the, the Monster House. Wow. It ties it all together. Yeah, dude. We are now in the finals of the Halloween movie bracket. Standing in, in the red corner, with a gross, a U.S. gross of $141.9 million. We have Monster House. And in the blue corner, with a U.S. gross... Of one hundred ninety-one million dollars, we have the Adams family, Woo! and this I don't. I'm not sure if this was the matchup I was expecting to be in the finals. No, but I think it is. Like looking back at it, I think it's a it's a much deserved final. I don't I, think there was something that got kind of screwed per se based on the I placement had, of it. I had the idea that Adams family would like be in the finals i, I wanted it I, to but i wasn't sure how it was going to be received because sometimes you, you like a movie and you think other people will and you recommend it to your friends and they, they, they do not like it that usually happens with me and jojo right <laughs> recommend a movie to her but i yes mm -hmm. i i was hoping adam's family was going to be in the finals i just made it mm -hmm. but it, i think it is against tough competition with monster house so that's why i kind of want noah to go first Mm. I want Noah to go first because I feel like he might be firm on one hand and then you'll be firm on the other hand. At least from the, like, the idea I've been getting from tonight and you guys' movie tastes. Okay, if Noah needs more time to think, I, I, I know what mine is. You, you can go first, Jason. I think it's no surprise that I'm going with Adam's family. And, I, and it might be... Actually, no, I was going to say it might be because it's fresh in my mind, but it isn't. It's, but I, but it is fresh in my mind. I just watched it again, and it's still no matter how many times I watch it. It's been plenty of times. I have it like on DVD. And no matter how many times I watch it, it holds up every single time as just a really 
enjoyable, fun, like time. There really isn't any part of it where I'm like, oh, well, that was kind of bad, or like, oh, I, this part could have been taken out. Even、mm-hmm. like, there are certain parts where like. Necessarily, they didn't need to be in the movie, but it just added to the movie. Like the lemonade stand scene, where they they make uh, the the once they're kicked out of the house and at the hotel, and they make a lemonade, lemonade stand, and like it's、uh, the girl scout asked if it was made from real lemons, and she's like,、uh, "I'll trade you for a box of Girl Scout cookies," and they ask if it's made out of real Girl Scouts. <laughs> like that didn't have to be in the movie, but it adds to the movie. Like just those、mm-hmm. little, the little scenes where like you get so much character, and and yeah, it's just, it's just a f- great fun time. Does not miss. And and I and I can watch it over and over again, and and still enjoy it just as much as I did the last time. And I'm super excited to watch Family Values probably in the next couple days. So are we going to Noah? Yeah. So I think what I said before about being split, like what were we talking about? Adam's Family and Sleepy Hollow.、Mm-hmm. Like ones like I see as a really whimsical one. Ones like a pretty gory horror. Right. I think Monster House splits the middle pretty damn well.、Mm. It's it's able to have it's a kids movie, so it has that friendliness. Um, it's not too it's not like gory or anything, obviously. But it does have that edge with some of the adult humor, and I think the monster house itself is kind of scary. Like, as a kid, you can be scared about the the visual. I think the lady's <laughs> scary. Yeah, the lady's scary, and the house itself, like as an idea, being sort of trapped in the house, being in love with somebody that's a literal monster. I think the idea is really scary. It is hampered by some. It doesn't like have the jokes that hit as much as Adam's Family. But I don't think it needs to, so I think I'm gonna go with Monster House. But we're down to Joe Quinn, the deciding vote. We've been nearly going for almost five hours. It seems like <laughs> I'm pretty sure it has been almost five hours. We've gone through this bracket.、Mm-hmm. We're at the last moment. We're in the mm-hmm. finals. Mm-hmm. Monster House versus Adam's Family. One vote, Monster House. One vote, Adam's Family. It comes down to you. Both great contenders, both very good Halloween movies. If you haven't seen either of these, and that you sat through this entire thing, I highly suggest you watch both of them、mm-hmm, for, of for the viewers. They're both extremely well-made and fun movies. But only one can be the champion of our bracket when the decision comes down to you. Okay. This this is probably one of the hardest decisions decisions I've ever had to make in my entire life. <laughs> Here, here's my reasoning for like why this is so hard. I, I like I said, this is the first time I've watched the Adams Family because I had only seen Adams Family value values, and I thought that was the Adams Family.、Mm-hmm. So I have more of a nostalgic connection to Monster House. I've seen Monster House a lot, and. Each time I go back and revisit it, there's always like something new I can find, like with it, and I really appreciate when a movie can do that. But I was just like so, like, enamored by how good Adam's Family was, because I, it's again I still think Family Values. If if I had to sit back and watch like Adam's Family or Adam's Family Values again, I I would pick Family Values, but that's not what we're here for. I I I will like eventually go back to Adam's Family, but I think if I'm picking which movie I would go back to first, which is what I've been basing everything off of here, I would go back to Monster House first. Oh wow! I thought you were gonna pick Adam's Family. Monster House, Monster House <laughs> gets my vote. There you、oh. have it, folks. That has been decided. <laughs> Surpr- I think it's quite surprisingly. Yeah, I did not. Ex- yeah. Because I didn't expect the bracket to go this way. Because I didn't think you guys would like pick Monster House over Corpse Bride. Yeah. What do you think is the best movie, or what is your favorite movie on this list? Because obviously. The matchups play in the factor of how the tournament turns out. My favorite is is Adam's Family. Yeah, 
mine would be Monster House. By a, by a smidge, by a smidge uh, though. Yeah, mine was no. Night of the Living Dead, where that ends in the first round. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a well fought game, gentlemen. But yeah. uh, it would have been uh, interesting I... to see if Night of the Living Dead did get through, because then it would have been Night of the Living Dead versus Halloween, two movies that Jokin did not like. Yeah, that would have been. What would you pick between Night of the Living Dead or Halloween? Yeah. Yeah. That's tough. Honestly, I had way more like fun with Night of the Living Dead though. No, so I would you pick were the Ned. friend, and that's why, right? Because you yeah. watched it with someone. Well, I watched, I watched, I watched Halloween with Emma. Oh, uh, okay. And so, like that, like I still had somebody like sit there and talk about it with. Fair, fair. I just, I couldn't like get any like enjoyment out of Halloween. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Well. It has been finalized. It is in the history books. Perhaps next year we'll get pick out some honor some of the honorable mentions. If I even leave the honorable mentions in the video, because that did take up a big chunk of time as well. <laughs> it did. It did. But if I if I <laughs> yeah. didn't if I didn't uh, take it out, then you'll know what they are. If I did take it out, then it'll be a mystery possibly for next year. Because who knows? Perhaps next year we'll take eight, uh, eight <laughs> uh, <laughs> runner ups. <laughs> Uh, of our honorable mentions and do a set because again these ne these these ones weren't necessarily the definitive best uh, Halloween movies I felt. Granted, I right. did I think I think Adam's Family is one of the best. Uh, and Monster Hunter is also one of the best. The two the two of the finals I do think are two of the best. But mm -hmm. uh, there are some that weren't on the list that could easily be be in contention, especially compared to like stuff like Haunted Mansion was on the list and uh, yeah like it uh. wasn't on the list. Like that's like a everybody loves that movie that I, that has seen it. Uh, there's there's a lot of other movies that didn't necessarily make it just because just the cookie did not crumble that way. Right. So who knows? Maybe next year we will do a second one, but we'll we'll learn from uh, any. I don't want to say mistakes, but we'll <laughs> learn from from this one of how to get it a bit more streamlined. Noah. I, I just want to say thank you for being uh, our longest podcast guest. Yeah, this is by far <laughs> yeah. the longest podcast we've ever recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so it's, so it's all right because it's our it's our tenth it's our tenth special. You know, Woo! It's, it's our tenth episode. So might as well ha you know do do something with like a bang, a bit of a bang to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, I'm honestly very thankful that you stuck around this long though, because I know that you were supposed to go over some friends' house tonight. <laughs> No, that's fine. I mean, we prepared for this for a long time. It's not like this was true. that plan was anything. Also true. We planned for right. So, uh, where can people find you, Noah? Yeah. Um, I'm in Wareham, Mass. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I'm on Twitter. I, I think my handle is at the underscore Wombologist with an A. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Very nice. Hopefully. Everybody enjoys. <laughs> no, here comes Amelia. Everybody enjoys the uh, bracket that we had. It was a, it was a, a great time. Joe, can where can people find you? Uh, so, uh, I, I I meant to tell you this, Jason, but I deleted my Instagram because I don't use it. So okay, that makes sense. Uh, you you can't find me on Instagram anymore, like uh -huh. Jason kept putting in the description. But you can find me on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch with uh 12 star and uh yeah come and talk we'll have fun link below my stuff is still currently cab 66 i say this every single time but there's a chance that by the next episode it will be changed and it's not gonna it, happen it will be advised mm -mm. it's not gonna happen we'll see uh we'll see. so yeah thank you everybody for if, if you did stick around and listen to the entire thing whether this was one episode or two episodes uh thank you <laughs> thank you a lot Mm -hmm. uh, we hope you it, it found it enjoyable and we hope that you have a great Halloween this will hopefully be out in like a week or so which will also be like a week before Halloween, Halloween. itself granted it's like, it's one of the longest episodes so we'll see how long it takes to edit so I uh, hope everybody has a fantastic Halloween and we will be back with our 11th episode hopefully sooner than later we have some people possibly lined up uh, for it and uh, yeah unless, unless this is split into 10 and 11. Granted, if we split it into two, it'd probably be 10, 10 and 10.5. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, I hope everybody has a good night. Yes.
and a, and a happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs>